Hi guys and welcome to our channel. We love salt water. I'm Carolina. And I'm Jose. And this is going to be a very different video that we usually do. Uh, we actually got some uh, stone crab traps. This is our first time. So if you guys want to catch some of these babies. Yeah. Stay tuned. comes with everything that you're gonna need except for a screw gun or a screwdriver and a rubber hammer or a rubber mallet. Right, the first thing you want to do is you want to lay out one trap at a time. You're gonna need a total of five panels. You're gonna need the lid which is the one with the rectangular opening in the center. You're gonna need another one with an offset rectangle. This is where the wood chew out goes. You're gonna need another panel that's gonna have all the edges all the way around are gonna be smooth. And two other additional side panels that have these three squares on the top. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do when you start assembling is you wanna grab the panel that has the wood chew off. You wanna put that in first. So basically you set it in the notch that's on the panel. You want to put the screws in from the inside of the panel. So basically you're screwing through the plastic, then through the wood. Come with your stainless steel screws. Get two screws out of the bag. And basically, just put a couple screws in. So after you have your wood shoe log installed, you want to go ahead and grab one of the panels that has three squares and the other panel that has the smooth edges all the way around. It is a tongue and glue system, so you want to get it started. You don't want to put it in all the way though. After you put it in about a quarter of the way, go ahead and grab the other panel that has the, uh, the three squares on the top and you're going to start feeding that panel in as well. Okay, put it in about a quarter of the way, then grab the panel that has the wood chew out. Remember to face the dowel inward. Place that panel underneath it just like that and do basically the same thing. You're gonna set it into the grooves. Right. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna work it down kind of evenly. If it gets a little tough, then you can pull out your rubber mallet as you can see, they slide them pretty easily. Okay. You know. All right, so the next step in putting the trap together is you want to grab the lid, which is the one with the uh, rectangular hole in the center. Just kind of place it on top of there. Um, you want, you're going to need two hinges for this. I want you to pay close attention. The hinges have two larger holes on one side and two smaller holes on the other. All right, you're actually gonna set the screw in through the big hole. Okay, now the easiest way to do this is, you wanna go ahead and put the hinge on the lid. Okay, you're gonna slide it in. See if I can see it. Basically, it's just like that. All right, you wanna do the same thing with the second hinge. Again, making sure that the bigger holes are facing upward. Okay, you're gonna slide that in. Now, Here's a little tricky part. It's not that hard, it's a little tricky. You wanna slightly open up the hinges a little bit because you wanna slide the hinge inside the panel, like a sandwich. Okay. After you set them in, make sure your lid close is good. You wanna center the hinges. And basically just grab a couple of stainless screws. Actually four of them is what you're gonna need. And after 
we have the hinges in place. Make sure it works properly. Let's go ahead and grab your latches. All right, pay close attention to this. Because if you don't, and you put the screws in, the latches won't work correctly. All right, again, the latch, the latches have a counter sinking, which is where you're gonna set your screw, All right? You have the three squares on the front part of the lid. You wanna find the center between two of the squares. You wanna line up this edge with the edge of the uh, trap. Okay, hold that in place, kind of center from here to here. Okay, you wanna make sure it's on the edge because if you go like this and you set the screw here, when you turn it, it's not gonna open. That's why it's very important to make sure that this edge is lined up with the edge of the trap. Right, after you find the location where you wanna install it, I recommend the center. Go ahead and grab one of your screws. Put the screw in place and kind of make sure you're lined up at the edge. Okay, do the same thing with the other side. Making sure that it's lined up with the edge and center between the two squares. Go ahead and do the same thing all over again. Go ahead and put the screw in, making sure that you're lined up with the edge. Okay, after you go ahead and put the screws in, make sure it's working properly. Turn your latches, see if your lid opens. Okay, after you have your latches on and your hinges on, the last step to this portion of it is installing the funnel. This is the funnel. Okay, the funnel can only go in one way. You can, well, actually, it could, it could go in backwards. You do not put the funnel on like that. No. <laughs> you want the funnel facing downward, like that. The crabs go in and it can't come back out. All right, the uh, funnel is going to require four of the stainless steel screws. And do the same thing, basically. All right, so you've got your funnel in place, the trap is assembled, everything works properly. Now the next step to putting these traps together is, we're actually gonna pour concrete. Um, as you can see, all the dowels are facing the bottom. And basically, um, I purchased two 60 pound bags of quick setting concrete, which is more than enough to do this. Um, you wanna pour that concrete right to the top of the uh, of this lip here, which is approximately, I don't know, about an inch, inch and a quarter oh, thick of concrete. So we're all set up to start pouring the concrete. Um, the first thing you're gonna have to do is get yourself some cardboard, lay it on the ground, and set all five traps on top of the cardboard. Um, you're also gonna need a mixing drill, which is going to make everything a lot easier, although you could mix it by hand. You're going to need a small trowel, a five gallon bucket, and two 60 pound bags of quick setting concrete. All right, so I'm going to start mixing and I'll show you guys the end result and then we'll take it from there. All right, guys, I went ahead and I poured the concrete into the traps. Now you want to grab your trowel and you want to work the concrete in. Make sure it's up to this little edge here. Moving it out, make sure you get all, all the corners and the sides filled. You do the same with all five traps. All right guys, for the next step, uh, you're gonna need a label maker, uh, some alcohol, a paper towel, some polyurethane oil-based or epoxy, and a small brush. Uh, the reason why you're gonna need the alcohol and the paper towel is there's actually a small area on the lids where you're gonna place your labels. You wanna clean this area first before you put your labels on. Um, after you put your labels on, you wanna go ahead and brush it um, with, with the epoxy or polyurethane. That'll help seal them in place and, and uh, prevent them from, from coming loose. All right, the, um, the label must have your, your name, your address, your trap registration numbers, and your trap number, for example. Uh, if you're gonna be launching five traps, uh, you can label them traps one of five, two of five, three of five, etc. 
Right, so I have all the tags on and epoxied in. All right, guys. So we got the um, I got the tags on the traps, and I'm getting ready to set up the buoy and the ropes. Um, the kit comes with 100 feet of rope. So what I did was I cut them in 20 foot increments. Uh, so I have five ropes now that are 20 feet long. Um, you want to burn the edges when you cut the rope. You want to kind of burn the edges because these ropes are are basically plastic and they float and they fray very easily. If you don't burn the edges, um, they'll tend to dismantle themselves. Also, before you get your buoy and you start putting your buoy on, you wanna make sure that you mark your buoys with an R for recreational. This R has to be at a minimum two inches in height. You could use any color you want. I chose um, white and red, which happened to be the paint that I had laying around the shed, but you could use any color combination you like. Now, before you put your rope in the buoy, you want to make sure you grab the lead. Okay, this lead also comes in the kit. Um, this lead is used for, uh, in case your rope does get cut off um, by a bolt or, or have your buoy happens to get loose, um, this will help the rope flow to the bottom and avoid it from getting tangled in any propellers. All right, typically what I like to do is I'll, I'll put the uh, lead in and I'll find midway on the rope. I'm more or less halfway. I basically, when I get to the halfway point, I'll just do a very simple loop knot. All right, you wanna make sure that the lead is in the loop. Okay, that's good enough, that's about halfway. All right, after you, have, after you get your lead on, go ahead and kind of measure where you're gonna need your knot for your buoy. So right around here, just make, make a very simple loop knot. Tie that, get the end of your rope, slide it in through the bottom of the buoy, and make another knot at the top of it. And there you go. That'll keep your, your buoy from going anywhere, and it'll keep it floating. All right, guys, so we got the buoys all set up. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and secure the rope to the trap itself. Um, typically, the instructions will tell you to tie your rope onto one corner of the trap. However, I like to do it a different way. I like to put the rope all the way through one whole side of the trap. And basically you could use any knot that you like. In this particular case, I'm just using the very simple loop knot. And then I'll go ahead and do a few additional knots on it just to kind of reinforce it and lock it into place. All right, just gotta make sure that whatever knot you make is gonna hold. Um, so that concludes the uh, the assembly portion of the video. Um, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. We'll see you on the water. Hi guys, we're on our way to setting the traps. We'll show you guys how to bait the traps. Yep, super excited about it. All right babe, so what do we got for bait for the traps? Uh, we got a lane snapper that we got on the last trip and some pig's feet. That's what we're gonna try with. moment of truth we're here at the uh, marina and we're gonna go check on our traps hopefully they're still there fingers crossed hey birdie 
Hey. <laughs> How cute, man. Oh my God. All right, guys, so we're heading towards our first trap. I think I see the buoy. Let's see what we have in there. Babe, get the carpets ready on top of there. Oh, we do have a crab. Let me see. And yeah, that's a stone crab. This guy has very small claws. <laughs> I should have brought something to grab him with. I forgot the tongues. Oh, those big. All right, guys, so we have our first one. Got our nice day. First claw. Nice. All right, guys, so we're going to add some more pig's feet in there. Put our zip ties back on. Make sure nobody messes with our traps. Hopefully, the other traps will still be there. Back in the water you go. And on to the next trap. Stop, neutral. And we're loaded. There's crabs? There's two multiple crabs. Nice. Hey. We have three or four crabs in here. Alright, let me anchor down. Tie wrap off. Let's see what we got here. Wow, four crabs. Look at this guys. Four crabs, and look like they all have keeper claws. Look at that, guys. Oh, yeah. Look, this guy's ready to attack. <laughs> it is still so far. Two out of five. I see it. I'm so excited. We're so worried that they're going to steal them, man. Hello, fish in here. Now we're gonna drop it over there. Sure. Yeah. Head that way. Doesn't have a crab in it, but it does have a little fish in it. So we're just gonna rebait it and set it back where we have this, the first trap. What kind of fish is it? What kind of fish is that? A very, fish? A very slippery one. <laughs> Yeah. Never seen this fish before. No, me neither. Huh. Well, you get to go back in the water. Yep. Alright, put some more feet footsies in here. Alright, so same thing. 
couple of tie wraps. I have to use two of them because uh, they're a little short. Well, at least we know that the uh, traps didn't get stolen. At least we're gonna go ahead and drop this one where we know that there is crab. Guys, we have a monster in one of the traps. Look at the size of this guy. To give you an idea, claw. here's my hand. Look at the size of that claw. That is a colossal claw. It's the claw. size of my hand. Wow, nice catch. All right, since we didn't bring the tongs, uh, we're both gonna have to work on this crab. So we'll show you once we have it uh, off the crab. All right, guys, so we have arrived to trap number five. Let's see what we have in here. And we have a couple of small ones, maybe one keeper claw. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and reset this trap somewhere else. I think we should put it uh, where the other one was that well, had the colossal. Where we got colossal? Yeah, the last, the last location. Okay. So yeah. All right, time to get the, the crabs out and rebate and reset. Yep. All right, so our last trap, we're able to get two claws out of it, both perfectly legal. Um, just to show you guys how we measure it, it's from the elbow, and it's gotta go past that mark right there. If it landed anywhere in between, then it's too short, and you can't um, harvest that claw, but this one, as you guys can see, is more than legal. And if this one that is the smallest one is legal, then this one is more than legal. So, nice dinner today. This is how you stone crab in Florida. We're so happy very successful trip and now we're considering maybe getting another five traps because this was only five to test it out but obviously there's crabs in this area and they didn't get stolen our traps didn't get stolen so a lot of reason for celebration so all right so we're gonna go reset this trap yes. where, where we caught the colossal one uh, i think we have better chances so here we go okay so we just got home these are super fresh guys and uh we're gonna go ahead and boil them for a few minutes um usually about 10 12 minutes or whenever um the water starts like foaming then we'll go ahead and pull them out and put them directly in ice and then they'll be ready to eat some people eat them hot we prefer them cold but here we go they're gonna start boiling okay so they're already cooked and once the water started foaming inside the pot uh we just took them out and now they're going straight into ice Ice them up real good. Sorry about that noise in the background. That's the hubby starting to wash the boat. But uh, yeah, this is it. After this, you could either have them once they cool down. This is just to stop them from cooking anymore. Or you could just freeze them until you have more. Like this will be enough for us today, but we decided to go ahead and wait for next round to have more. But yeah, that's it. We're gonna leave them here for about 15 minutes until they're nice and cool. And that's it. Ready to enjoy. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, our first actual fresh stone crab claw. We actually caught this claw. We pulled it out of the water, I want to say approximately three hours ago. So let's see. Hopefully it's good. Sauce. <laughs> By the way, this is mustard sauce from Publix. Yum! <laughs> All those restaurants that sell stone crab are in trouble now because now we know how to catch our own. Mm. But you gotta try it. It's delicious. Your turn. Here we go. <laughs> Mmm. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mmm. We went to Joe Stone Crab a couple of months ago. Which was fine. Delicious. It was amazing. This is just, as, as a matter of fact, this is more amazing because we caught it ourselves. Yes. <laughs> wow. Guys, gotta try this. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. So this is it for this video. I hope that you guys found it useful. Um, if you want to go out there and try it, I definitely recommend it. What an experience. We are hooked on stone crab tracking. 
And uh, I think we're gonna get five more because it's five per person. So I got my five. I think we're gonna get his five and we're definitely gonna keep doing this. So if you like the video, don't forget to give us those thumbs up. Please subscribe so we can bring you some more content. And um, I think the next thing that we're gonna try pretty soon, depending on the weather, might be shrimping. Cause we got the fishing, we got the crab traps, and we haven't cut any shrimp. Yeah, actually we have all the gear for the shrimp. I've got the, uh, the green light, uh, we have the, uh, the nets, the nets. Uh -huh. uh, we're ready. We're just waiting on the right time and the right weather. But this one, total success. We're super happy. And again, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, which is usually uh, what we want for you guys to learn something and enjoy it. So until next time. Keep on fishing. Yes.